And there you have President Trump at the White House welcoming the two-time defending Stanley Cup champions, the Pittsburgh Penguins, as they make a little victory tour there to meet with the president. Hi, everyone. I'm Amna Nawaz in New York. Well, look, championship sports teams come to the White House all the time. In 2017, carries with it a whole different meaning. I want to bring in my colleague Rick Klein, ABC's political director down in Washington, D.C. And Rick, I'll be the first to say it. I was surprised that the president did not mention anything about the NFL or the protests or his involvement in that conversation. The closest he came on is right at the top where he said, I tell you, everyone wanted to be here. To me, that was a direct shot at, uh, at the NBA and the Golden State Warriors, who, of course, uh, their star player, Steph Curry, said he wouldn't attend. And the president said he would be disinvited. But, uh, but you're right, Amna, maybe some restraint from the president. I mean, he meandered into inviting the owner of the Penguins to renegotiate NAFTA for him <laughs> and joking about how he wants teams that look a little less good than the Pittsburgh Penguins. But he didn't mention the, the kneeling controversy, uh, even though he may have a little bit of a cause for victory lap of his own on that front because the NFL has announced that it plans to discuss a policy that would require players to stand. So this extraordinary couple of weeks, which included the Penguins accepting and now taking part in this invitation at the White House, uh, maybe it's a, a bit of an end point today with this visit and with that decision by the NFL. And Rick, it's worth pointing out the president's involvement in the debate has maybe potentially moved some action on this. We know, as you mentioned, the NFL owners are going to be meeting anyway next week in New York. We know now as a result of reporting that they're going to consider a rule change requiring some of the players to stand. And we know Jerry Jones, the owner of the Cowboys, has come out pretty strongly against this to say that maybe he's going to say that people who don't, who don't stand during the anthem don't get to play in the games. Have you heard from the White House in response to any of these? Yeah, the White House uh, just just a, a few moments ago, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, the White House press secretary, saying that they, they would certainly welcome at the White House a, a rule that formalized this. So the White House has also been complimentary, the president himself, of Jerry Jones and that decision. And I think, look, this has been an extraordinary couple of weeks. No one was talking about this issue this year on. People forget that it was really last season when Colin Kaepernick sparked the national debate. President Obama was still president. Uh, and this had nothing to do, according to the people that were involved in the protests, with uh, disrespecting veterans or, or the flag itself. It was about police brutality and, and incidents where minorities felt like they were unfairly targeted. Pr Donald Trump became president. He sees this or the rumblings of this starting to happen again in a new NFL season. Then he decides to speak out. So he created this issue. He created this crisis moment for the NFL. And now the, the, the White House is going to be in a position where they can claim credit for potentially a major policy change uh, that would change the, 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 the nature of these protests at the beginning of games that we've become used to. Well, he created it to some degree, right, by changing the conversation. As you mentioned, the protests were always about over-policing in communities of color, about police brutality, uh, disproportionately affecting black Americans. Those statistics are absolutely true, and we're not talking about that anymore. But to, to the degree that a president can actually sway the conversation, I mean, you take a look at what has happened over the last several weeks. Every time someone speaks up about this, whether it's an owner or a player or a, a sports anchor, the president... Uh, can then put them in their crosshairs. You think it's had kind of a chilling effect over people who don't even want to get involved in the conversation anymore, lest they bring on the ire of the highest office in the land. I, I think it has to. I mean, I think he, he's gotten a, a, a tremendous amount of political mileage out of something that he just tossed into a speech in Alabama, of all, all places, on the eve of a Senate election several weeks ago. He has changed the nature of the debate. He has changed the behaviors as part of this. Uh, we know that his campaign arm has been fundraising actively on this. We saw Vice President Pence travel to, the, to, to his home state of Indiana over the weekend to essentially lost, launch his own protest of the protesters in leaving early from that game. So th they've gotten a lot out of this, but I, I think the, the position that it puts the White House in of potentially standing up against the First Amendment is a unique one. It's unique to this era, and I think it does have to, uh, even by the, peop the, 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 the admission of people involved in this closely, maybe people that be on President Trump's side, the debate is different. This debate over free speech has morphed into something that the original protesters never wanted it to be. And Rick, it's worth pointing out in the context of today's events, the NHL has certainly not really been on the forefront of these issues when it comes to the national anthem and kneeling or protesting during it. There's only 30 black players in the league as opposed to the NFL, where 70 percent of the players are African-American. But this is, to be sure, based on what you've said, what we've seen, this is not going away anytime soon in terms of the president being willing to weigh in.
Yeah, and, look, and that's a critical point. And I think it's important context given the racial dynamic of all of this is that uh, there weren't a lot of uh, faces of color in that room. I should also note there weren't a whole lot of Americans in that room either. The, the <laughs> NHL is a, is a very international league. A lot of Eastern European, Russian, Swedish, uh, Canadian players, uh, in, in, including some on the, on the Penguins roster. But, but I think, yeah, look, it's every time people re receive a, an invitation like this to the White House, it's been pro forma in the past. It's something you did when you came to town. You come and play a Washington team. You have your moment at the White House. It's worked under Democratic and Republican presidents. It takes on a different meaning now. And I think the president, going out of his way to, to mention some of the other teams that have been there, he likes basking in the glory. Not particularly a hockey fan, but he did, did okay, by my reckoning, with the pronunciation and the terminology. No major gaffes around that. And it's going to be different anytime this president uh, extends that invitation because the nature of this president and this presidency are different. Uh, and because he is so willing to call people out for making political stands, uh, he is going to in inject that bit of a, of a combative tone. And it's going to be a decision that, that every team faces for the duration of the Trump presidency. What do you want to do when President Trump calls? We'll have to see how that moves forward now. No politics there today, but of course, we'll keep an eye on it. Rick Klein down in Washington, D.C. Thanks, Rick. Good to talk. Thanks, Amna. Thanks to all of you for watching as well. Remember, you can head over to abcnews.com at any time for continuing coverage or download the ABC News app. Get all those breaking news headlines right to your phone. For now, I'm Amna Nawaz. See you back here soon.